Good morning, and welcome to worship with Normandale Lutheran Church. We're delighted you've joined us for this online service of worship. We encourage you to take advantage of our midweek opportunities, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all online at 10 a.m., Tuesdays for kids and families, Wednesdays for adult Bible learning, Thursdays for Faith Five devotional in a Zoom meeting with other people from our community of faith. We're heartened by all the ways you're remaining connected. Your creativity in the Spirit of God to reach out is a way for the church to remain strong. Your generosity strengthens and embolden us, emboldens us for the continued proclamation of Jesus Christ. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have started a new thought that I'd like you to send to me. You know you're in COVID time when, and fill in the blank. I'll start. You know you're in COVID time when you pick out your socks to match your pajama pants because you feel like you should at least try a little bit. If you want to come up with one of those and send it to me, paul at normluth.org. I'm going to collect those together. Let's see what story we might tell together. Welcome to worship today. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ Jesus in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd and led us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. I would invite you at home to find some water or when you're at the sink washing your hands the next time, get some water on your fingers. Trace a sign of the cross on the forehead and say these words, you are a beloved child of God. To you, O oh God, be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Love lives again, that with the dead has been. Love is home. 
from our dining room at our sacred table to yours. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now let us join together in the prayer of the day. Gracious God of bread and water, at the table in the breaking of the bread, you open our eyes to see the risen Christ. Stay with us today that we may see you and live through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. reading from the book of Acts, and it occurs um, after Peter's sermon, after the resurrection of Jesus, and it talks about uh, life among the believers. A reading from Acts chapter 2. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together, and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Dear people of Normandale, welcome to our table. This is the table we eat at now, and as you can see, we've had to get a larger table. It's been expanded, has leaves that can be added, so when all of the children and grandchildren come over, there's a place for everyone at the table. But as you can see, if I sit down at this end and Lisa at the other end, it's quite a distance between, which makes passing of the elements a little more difficult. 
So, for example, Lisa, will you please pass me the salt and pepper? I really can't reach it, honey. Can't you get it yourself? <laughs> Clearly, we have been sheltering in place for a little too long. Welcome to our table. The Holy Gospel reading in Luke, the 24th chapter. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And Jesus said to them, what are you discussing with each other as you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered Jesus, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who had said that Jesus was alive. Some of those who were there with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly saying, stay with us. Because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So Jesus went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening up the scriptures to us? And so that same hour they got up, and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. So then they in turn told what had happened on the road, and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, Jesus is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. And so this day, grace, mercy, and peace are yours through Christ our Lord. Amen. Seven miles, seven miles of disillusionment. They walked away from Jerusalem. The Jesus movement was over. Jesus was dead, and all that they had hoped for had come to a shocking end. They were walking on their way seven miles, giving them plenty of time to ponder the what next of life. And in that wilderness walk, they were thinking about would they return to their old jobs? Would their families be still awaiting them? Was what they left behind even still a possibility in the future? Seven miles of disillusionment. Cleopas and the unnamed disciple walked together. And into their disillusionment, Jesus 
shows up. It says Jesus came near and walked alongside them. They had a conversation back and forth of the things that had taken place in Jerusalem, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And as they walked along, it appeared that Jesus would go on. They were headed to a place called Emmaus, which means warm spring. And when they reached the place of their village, Jesus was walking ahead. But they knew enough to offer a simple phrase. Stay with us. Stay with us. And then the table happened. When our children were growing up, Lisa's dad, Grandpa Jack, built for us a six-foot pine trestle table as our eating table. It was beautiful. The finish shined as we moved it into our home for the first time. And so mom and dad thought there ought to be a few rules on how we care for this beautiful heirloom of the family. Rule number one, if you're going to do your homework at the table, you need to have at least two additional sheets of paper beneath the work you are writing on. Rule number two, be careful around the top of the table with sharp objects such as utensils or anything else we might be using for the meal. Rule number three, no hot items on top of the table without proper protection beneath them. I think all three of those rules were broken somewhere within the first month. Somewhere in week two, unsaid child was sitting at the table doing their homework and forgot about the two additional sheets beneath. They were writing their book report for school and by the time they had finished, when the paper was picked up, you could read every sentence of their work in the top of the table. Somewhere shortly thereafter, said dad went to the center of the table following a meal to remove the carpenter, the antique carpenter's toolbox that sat at the center of the table to hold the elements for meals, such as napkins and spoons and salt and pepper. And this antique carpenter's toolbox had a protruding nail from the bottom, the nail head sticking out. And so in my haste to remove it, I forgot to carefully lift it up and I pulled it across the table and left a beautiful, in the tabletop that had once been perfect. And sometime shortly thereafter, said mom, it was fall season and she was going to can vegetables, which required the boiling of the jars on top of the, of the stove top. And she removed them carefully and she put dish towels on the top of the table and set them down on top of the dish towels but it was not enough protection. And so when she removed the jars and pulled the dish towels aside, there were perfect circles of finish that had been lifted from the tabletop. Now the table was ours because we were not only at the table, we were now in the table with all of our imperfections exposed, our human fears and frailties, our nicks, our dents, our scratches, our disillusionment. And it's at that place, in that place, that Jesus shows up. Jesus shows up in his broken body, in the broken bread, and our eyes come open. And in that broken bread and from our broken selves, lost, afraid, and disillusioned, we know one simple phrase to offer. Stay with us. Jesus, stay with us. And Jesus, Dear people, stays. 
And this, this is our table, the table of our community of faith, where we come with our disillusioned, fearful and frail selves, with our nicks, our dents, and our scratches, so that we might be healed. It's the table of our community of faith, where you gather with brothers and sisters, not only here, but all over the world, who share similar tables. We come because Jesus, in the breaking of the bread, opens our eyes. And now I'd like you to take a moment to close your eyes and to see in your mind's eye someone from our community who comes to mind, with whom you've shared this familiar space around this table. And I want you to pray a prayer of thanks for them. Pray a prayer of God's presence for them. Cleopas, whose name means all the glory, and an unnamed disciple, take a seven-mile walk of dis disillusionment, only to be met by Jesus when the table happened. And it's the Jesus table. It's the table of God's love and grace poured out. It's the table of hope and promise. It's the table that will see us through this time until we are reunited together again in this place. That's all we really need to know. That wherever you are and what, at whatever table you eat, Jesus is already there saying, for you. For you. I give my life for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Christy Shepherd here at our breakfast bar. Five years ago, right about now, Chris and I were planning to redo our kitchen, starting with removing the wall, which would be right about here, between the dining room and the kitchen to open up the space and give more working and gathering area. 
It meant removing the formal dining room. Mm. Fred and I thought a lot about what losing a dining room would mean to our family life. Getting rid of a table, a real table and chairs. And we started to talk about what happens if the kids want to come over and have dinner with us and want to all be together. What do we do then? And then we remembered we don't have <laughs> big family dinners and we never have. Once we accepted the fact that we weren't the kind of family who had regular Sunday dinners together, we just moved ahead. Fred tore down this wall and created a place for us to eat that fit who we really are, not who we thought we should be or who we hoped we might be someday. We eat almost every meal right here together, just the two of us. And we love our time together, the meals we cook together, the food we enjoy, this is our life, and we love it. The amazing thing is this counter is central to our family life. When we do all get together, this is where we tend to gather, right around this countertop. The grandkids eat their macaroni and cheese here, they make their crafts, they play their games, all right here. We've done multi-generational cookie baking events here, and we've canned pickles here. This is the spot for our potlucks, where all the good food is laid out and people just stand around and graze for hours at a time, talking and laughing and having a good time together. This counter expands to include whoever is here whenever, whenever they're here, and that includes Thanksgiving, when 24 people gather here and eat together at multiple tables throughout the house. The common denominator is Chris and me. We're always here and happy to have this place. Christ is always here with us, coming to life in the blessing of our relationship and our acceptance and appreciation of who we are as a family. Thank you to the shepherds, Fred and Christy, for sharing your story of your own dining room, your own sacred table, and, and the experience of uh, remodeling your home to fit the needs that you have. In a moment, we will take an offering. Uh, if you are a person who likes to send a check, you can still send a check in the mail to Normandale Lutheran Church at 6100 Normandale Road in Edina, or you can go online to normluth.org slash give. Uh, to, to make a one-time offering or to become a sustaining member. While our sanctuary space is indeed right now an empty tomb, the church is not closed. Normandale Lutheran continues to do vital ministry, both in our local neighborhoods and also across the world. And so we give you thanks for the generosity you have shown already in this time, this, this bizarre time of a global pandemic. And we give you thanks for your ongoing sustaining support of the ministries of Normandale Lutheran Church. And so with that, I wish you the peace of Christ, and I would invite you to share a sign of God's peace with those who are gathered with you, um, and, and or write a comment on the video wherever you're watching it, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Vimeo later. Uh, share a sign of God's peace with, uh, with the community gathered to, to worship together today. The peace of the Lord be with you.
I would invite you to gather the elements you'll be using for communion this morning so that we might pray over them and bless them in your own worship spaces. Let us pray. O oh God most mighty, O oh God most merciful, O oh God our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise. Call us to your table. Grant us your life. When the world was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation. David fought Goliath, and the psalmists cried out for healing, and full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, he blessed it, he gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Let's hear it. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. Amen. O oh God, you are breath. Send your spirit on this meal. O oh God, you are bread. Feed us with yourself. O oh God, you are wine. Warm our hearts and make us one. O oh God, you are fire. Transform us with hope. O oh God, most majestic. O oh God, most motherly. O oh God, our strength and our song. You show us a vision of a tree of life with fruit for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you, now and forever. Amen. And Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now, with the elements that you have gathered before you, that we have now prayed over and blessed, I would invite you to share with one another or to eat the bread and drink the wine or whatever it is that you have and hear these words or share these words with one another. This is the body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you.
life-giving God, you have fed us with your word, and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. From our tables into the world, may your love and grace shine through us. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Live in peace. Christ is near. Alleluia. <laughs>